Welcome to this short video on creating Google Forms. There are many ways to use Google Forms in the classroom. One example is using a Google Form as a quick check-in with your students when they come to school in the morning. You can have students fill out a Google Form like this when they come to school so you can see how their day is going. You could also use Google Forms for things like a class library book checkout system. You might also want to create a bathroom log. Google Forms are also great for quick formative assessments. I would like students to fill out this Google Form after our lesson on fractions. This can help guide my instruction for the next day. Another example of formative assessment with using a Google Form is creating an exit slip. In order to start my Google Form, I need to be logged into my Drive account. I then click on Create. I select Form. It then prompts me to choose the title of my Google Form and the theme. This is going to be called Blogging Exit Slip. And I'm going to choose this one for my theme. And I'm going to click OK. At the very top here, there are a couple of different options. I can click on theme to change my theme color. Right here where it says choose response destination. This is important. If I click on this, this is going to prompt me to choose a response destination for my actual responses or answers from the Google form. So once students or adults have started submitting answers to my Google form, my responses are going to go into a new spreadsheet called blogging exit slip responses. I'm going to click on create and it's setting up the spreadsheet. If I click on view responses, it actually takes me to the spreadsheet where all of my answers from the Google form are going to start to fill in the spreadsheet. The great thing about this is there is a timestamp, so it will list the date and the time that each person submitted the Google form. I'm going to close out of this, and now we're back at our editor. If I click here, it says accepting responses, and then it says not accepting responses. So you can turn on and off your Google form when you'd like to accept responses to that. If I click on view live form, this takes me to what the students see when they're taking my Google form. So this is the live form and it's not too detailed yet because I don't have any of my questions in. So I'm going to close out of that. If I scroll up to the top, there's a couple of more form settings. If I want to require that um, a District 58 user logs in to be able to answer questions on this form, I can check this box to require a login. I could also collect the respondent's um, username as well. So it's up to you if you'd like to keep that checked or unchecked. There's also an option to show a progress bar at the bottom of the form pages to show um, what percentage of the form has been completed. Underneath the title of the Google Form, there's a spot for you to put a description in. So if you need to give the students specific directions or if you want to put your learning targets in there, this would be a good place for that. If I scroll down, I can see that Google Forms has prompted me to get started with some of my questions. I'm going to change this to a text box because I want the students to put their first and last name in the Google Form. And I'm going to make this a required question because I really want them to have their first and last name so I know who is answering the questions on my Google Form. So I'm going to click Done. If I hover over the question that I just created, a pencil shows up for me to edit it. I can also make another copy of this so I have two of the same question. Or I can click on the trash can to delete the question. I'm going to add another item. This time I'm going to add a multiple choice question. There's a spot for help text if you need to give any further information about the question.
And if I want to make this a required question, I click on required question and then I hit done. And then there's my multiple choice question. There are lots of other questions to choose from. I could do a paragraph text if I wanted there to be a longer response question for the students. I could also choose um, check boxes. So students have the option to check more than one answer for something. Um, they can choose from a list. So there's a drop down list that will appear if they choose from a list. There's a scale for them to choose from, a one to five scale. There's a grid question where you can add rows and columns for them to select answers within a grid. There's an option to add a question that includes a date. You could also add a question that includes a time as well. When you're done adding your questions, at the very bottom, there's settings for a confirmation page. So when the students are all done with their Google Form and they've clicked on Submit, a, a message comes up. You can adjust this and change this as needed. So if you need to give the students a different direction or tell them what the next step is, you can type that in here in this box. If you leave this checked, that means there's a link where students can submit another response to the Google Form. So you can check that or uncheck that. This allows them to see the results of the form. So if you want the students to see all the answers of the form, then you would check this. And if you allow the third box to be checked, that means all the people taking the Google Form can edit their responses after they submit them. Down here at the bottom, you'll see a blue button that says Send Form. If I click on Send Form, and I want to add other collaborators, and I want them to work on editing the form with me, I would click on Add Collaborators. This is going to allow me to invite people to edit the form with me, and then they would be able to see their responses as well. I'm going to hit Cancel, and then click Done. If I click Send Form, and I just want to send the form through email, I could put someone's email in here, and then they would actually get the form, the actual live form in an email. If they look in their email, they'll actually see the form within their email. So this is one way that you can share a Google form with someone is sending it through their email. Another way that you can share it is that there's a link at the top here. You can copy this link. I'm going to open a new tab here and paste it in. And now I can view the live form this way. So you can copy and paste this link right here to share that. Another spot where you can see that is if you click on view live form, it will take you to this live form here and I can copy this link at the top and paste it somewhere for someone to be able to access my form.